Thanks a lot. We mentioned before the two types of solids, which are crystalline solids and amorphous solids. And crystalline solids exist either as single crystals or as groups of crystals. Crystal structure. What's crystal structure? The total 3D arrangement of particles of a crystal. The, the particles of a solid are arranged in a 3D dimensions. Three dimensions arrangement. So this arrangement is called crystal structure. And the lattice is the coordinate system that represents arrangement of particle in the crystal or the repeating arrangement of points like network. Unit cell. Unit cell is the smallest portion or the smallest unit of a crystal lattice that shows the 3D pattern of the entire lattice. For example, here the particles are arranged in simple cubic structure like for sodium chloride. The particles are arranged in simple cubic. The second is the particles here are arranged in center center the cubic an atom in the center and around it in the corners of the cube there are different particles so the second represents body centered cubic represents the unit cell for centered body cubic the third represents face centered cubic cube with a particle in each face of the cube so here are some unit cells that represent the smallest unit of a crystal lattice here are different shapes of unit cells a crystal and its unit cell can have any one of the seven types of symmetry the first one represents cubic the second tetragonal the third orthorhombic the fourth monoclinic the fifth triclinic trigonal and hexagonal here the seven types of symmetry binding forces in crystals crystals structure can also be described in terms of the types of particles in them and the types of chemical bonding between particles we have here different solids ionic solids covalent network metallic covalent molecular solids nonpolar and covalent molecular polar so we have ionic, covalent network, metallic, and the covalent molecular. And the covalent molecular is classified into nonpolar and polar. For example, ionic solids such as NaCl and MgF2, the melting point for NaCl is 801, and the melting point of magnesium fluoride, MgF2, is 1266 and you, if you compare the melting points for different solids for ionic covalent network metallic covalent molecular nonpolar and polar you notes the following ionic crystals ionic crystal structure consists of positive and negative ions arranged in a regular pattern Generally, ionic crystals form when group 1 or group 2 metals, like sodium for group 1, like calcium and magnesium for group 2, combine with group 16 or group 17. Group 16 such as sulfur and oxygen, group 17 such as chlorine and fluorine and so on. So, group 1 or group 2, when combined with group 16 or group 17, they form ionic crystals. These crystals are hard and brittle. Brittle can be broken easily. 
and they have high melting points and they are good insulators in their solid form not solutions not molten form in their solid form they are good insulators covalent network crystals here they are covalent the bonds are covalent bonds but each molecule is linked with the other molecules they form network network crystals the molecules are not separated from each other each atom is covalently bonded to its nearest neighboring atom the covalent bonding extends through a network that includes a very large number of atoms so their building units are molecules, but these molecules are not separated. They combine with each other, forming network. The network solids are very hard, harder than the ionic. Brittle, can be broken. Have high melting points and are usually non-conductors or semiconductors. They form semiconductors. Semiconductors between conductors and insulators. Metallic crystals, the third type of solids, which is metallic metals. The metallic crystal structure consists of metal cations surrounded by a sea of delocalized valence electrons. In metals, the electrons are free to move throughout the crystal. They are not bound to a certain atom. We are speaking about the valence electrons. So the valence electrons can move around through the crystal forming what we call C, electron C. They are delocalized. Delocalized means not in their fixed position. They can move through. The electrons come from the metal atoms and they belong to the crystal as a whole. The electron doesn't belong to a certain atom. It belongs to the crystal. The freedom of these delocalized electrons to move throughout the crystal explains the high electric conductivity of metals. Why metals are good conductors of electricity? Due to the freedom of the delocalized electrons to move throughout the crystal. So metals such as copper, silver, iron, gold, aluminum, are good conductors. Why? Because they have free electrons or delocalized electrons that can move through the crystal so they conduct electricity well. So they are good electric conductors. Covalent molecular crystals. Covalent molecular crystals. They consist of separate molecules. Uh, the crystal structure of covalent molecular substance consists of covalent bonded molecules held together by intermolecular forces. There are forces among the molecules called intermolecular forces. So intermolecular forces is the forces among the molecules. If the molecules are nonpolar, nonpolar then there are only weak London dispersion forces between molecules. In a polar covalent molecular crystal, molecules are held together by dispersion forces, like dipole-dipole forces, and sometimes by hydrogen bond, like in water molecules. Water molecules are held together by hydrogen bond. Covalent molecular crystals have low melting points and easily vaporized. Low melting points, they may be gases, liquids, or solids with low melting points. And they can vaporize easily, means they have low boiling points. And relatively soft. If they are solids, they are relatively soft like wax, 
wax is covalent molecular but it is relatively soft because it has low boiling point and they are good insulators so covalent molecular crystals have low melting points easily vaporized relatively soft and good insulators